Welcome to Intro Psychology Unit 9. Although this is our first unit of the semester, I'm calling it Unit 9 just to keep everything similar to the textbook. And this unit is on human development. Now, I have this organized as a game. You might be familiar about the board game called Life, but that board game actually starts at the end of college, whereas as we're going to see, this board game really has its emphasis with everything before college. And development is a really fascinating area, but also a really complicated area. One of the things that makes human development so complicated in psychology is it actually draws on cognitive psychology, behavioral psychology, social psychology, neuroscience, all in one. So it's a really good unit to start with because it kind of reminds us of all the other areas of psych, but it can also be overwhelming. So I hope by the way I've designed this, it makes it a little bit easier to follow. Sometimes we just talk about each theory in its own and then you can't really connect the theories. What I'm trying to do is actually going to introduce you to different theories in development and then we're going to play the board game and see how the theories play out in different ages and stages. So for this game, we're going to have seven categories of development. We're going to have morality, uh, environmental, psychosexual, psychosocial, emotional attachment, cognitive and physical development. Now, it's important to understand that not all developmental psychologists agree in how these stages work. Some psychologists believe that development is continuous and that we're just like puppies, how puppies are smaller versions of grown dogs. And as we develop, there's just a smooth, gradual development. Versus other developmental psychologists believe that our stages are discrete steps and that we're not like a puppy, we're more like a butterfly or a frog, where we have an egg, a caterpillar, a chrysalis, and a butterfly stage, or a tadpole and frog stage. And so it's for you to decide if you think these are discrete or not at the end of the game. So let's talk about these seven categories of development. The first we're only gonna talk about once and we won't see it really play out in the game, but then the other six we will. So the first theory of development I want to talk to you about is the ecological model as proposed by Yuri Bronfenbrenner. Bronfenbrenner believed that kids really got their worldview set in stone in their formative years and there was lots of things that could impact them. One of the very first things that could impact child's development was who the child was, their own health, their gender, their personality, all their individual traits. But then outside the child, in the next realm of influence, we had what's called the microsystem. And the microsystem was really the direct influences on a kid. So these were the regular people they saw every day, their parents, their siblings, their friends, their teachers, their coaches, the people they interacted with the most. Outside the microsystem, there's the mesosystem. And it looks the same, but this is actually the relationships between the different people in your microsystem. So this is how your parents interact with each other, how your parents interact with your siblings, how your two friends talk to each other, how your teacher talks to your coach and you see it. So this can also influence us when we see the relationships around us. Outside the mesosystem, then we have what's known as the exosystem. And this was the more indirect influences in our life. So we might talk to some people in our school, but we probably don't directly interact with everyone in our school every day the whole school environment would be in our exosystem as an indirect influence. You might not talk to everyone on your sports team or everyone in your neighborhood on a given day or year. And so this is the idea that your neighborhood can still influence you and the social norms that exist on your sports team or on your school bus or in your neighborhood would definitely still impact you. Outside the exosystem, then there's the more broad macro system. These are the more intangible cultural things like what country you live in, if you live in a city or the country, if you follow a certain religion, if your parents have a certain level of education. So the cultural stuff that can impact you. And this need might also be here because we know ethnicity is not so much of a biological uh, factor, but it's more about how people socialize and interact with you based on your perceived ethnicity. And then finally, in Bronfenbrenner's model, we have the chronosystem. And these are the major life events that occur at certain times in our childhood or during our formative years. These could be bad things like divorce or war or a global pandemic or a natural disaster. Or they could be good things like immigrating to a new country, getting a step parent, getting adopted, or getting access to the internet. 
But overall, he believed that these different realms of influence, the child factors, microsystem, mesosystem, exosystem, macrosystem, and chronosystem, would all influence us. Now, most of all, most psychologists agree with Bronfer Brenner. They think this is a really good theory, but that's all it is, is a theory. It's really hard to test based on this theory because it would be hard to put this in a statistical model and make any sense of it. So that's why out of this theory, we're gonna just leave it here in the theory section. You won't see it again in the rest of this unit. Then we have to talk about another theory, and that is the theory of Sigmund Freud's psychosexual development. Freud believed that all of us have these unconscious desires that drive us towards pleasure and satisfaction. And he wasn't talking about sex as an intercourse here. He was talking about more like comfort and touching, and, and it was a bit of a different type of sex he was talking about. But more of a pleasurable form of satisfaction is what he's talking about, these unconscious satisfactions. And he believed at every stage in our development, there was a different sort of conflict we had to resolve to satisfy these sexual desires. We'll get into the stages as we play the game. Another theory we're going to talk about is the theory of morality by Lawrence Kohlberg. Kohlberg believes that the way we make really tough ethical decisions changes over our development. He's most famously known for hypothetical situations he would give to people, such as the Heinz Dilemma. In the Heinz Dilemma, you were Heinz, you live in a small village, and your wife is very terminally ill. However, in your small village also is the pharmacist who has just discovered the medical cure for your wife's ailment. However, the pharmacist will not give you the medicine unless you pay a very high price. You do not have the money to pay this price. You've asked for loans, you've asked for a GoFundMe, you cannot get access to the medicine, and the pharmacist will not lower the price. You know the pharmacist is rich, they don't need that much money. They could give it to you at a much affordable price, but they still won't. Do you choose to steal the medicine and save your wife? And if your wife gets the medicine, she likely will survive. Or do you choose to not steal the medicine and let your wife die? Now, Colbert believed it was less important what you chose to do, and much more important why you chose to do it, the rationale you would give. If you've already been familiar with the Heinz Dilemma, let me give you a couple other dilemmas. Imagine you're going to high school and your high school has a dress code that's really unfair. They really ask you to ban ridiculous things that don't seem like a problem. You think that their rule doesn't make sense. Do you break the dress code or do you go along with it? How about another one? When you're driving a car, do you choose to speed? Do you choose to speed only in certain situations like when you're alone at night or when you're on a country road or do you even choose to speed in heavy traffic? Why or why not? Remember, it's not important whether you speed or not, but your rationale for what you give. And finally, imagine you have a friend that's asking you for answers on a quiz. And you're a pretty good student, they're struggling, you know that if you help them, you'll help them up their grade. But you also know that it's wrong. What would you choose? Feel free to brainstorm what you would pick for each one of those, and as we play the game, you will find out where you would land in terms of Kohlberg's theory of moral development. Next up, we don't have a big name to tie to this one, but it is the area of physical development. And so this is the idea that psychology really overlaps with pediatrics a lot. We're very fascinated by how quickly people grow in terms of their height and their weight and their bone, bone growth and their muscle growth. And that's because growth is often a huge indicator of health, especially in the younger years. So we're fascinated by how we can move our body in what's called motor development, the ability to move our muscles in a coordinated fashion, and also to balance. And so these are, these are things we're really hung up on, to the point that we like to follow three types of growth patterns. We like to look at one's growth for the pattern of cephalocaudal growth. This is the idea that they tend to develop first at the head and then gradually down to the toes. So it's the idea as we're growing, our head is the first to develop in detail, then our trunk, and then our legs. Then there's the theory of proximal distal development. This is the idea that our organs in our trunk tend to become more mature and more ready because they're more essential before our extremities. And we tend to start to coordinate things like our body before we can coordinate things like our fingers. So it, we might be able to roll over before we can uh, play piano, for instance. And then there's the theory of differentiation. Differentiation is the idea that how we grow moves from simple to complex. It's the idea that uh, something like our hand gestures start off as very simple. We move our whole arm or our whole hand, 
and then eventually instead of moving our whole hand to grasp at something we develop what's known as the sock puppet grasp where you can just bend um, your fingers and your thumb and then eventually you can specify which fingers and you can do what's known as the pincher grasp so from the whole hand or even intermediate to the flapper grasp to the sock puppet grasp to the pincher grasp okay so that is four of our theories in developmental psychology our fifth one is the theory of cognitive development. Big name here is Jean Piaget. And Jean Piaget believed how we understand or think, or think about thinking, how we solve problems, and how we understand other people's perspectives and how we think about other people's thinking can really change as we get older. And so we'll talk about his different stages as we play the game. Theory number six, is Mary Ainsworth theory of attachment. And this is the idea that how we attach ourselves to our relationships can really vary. These emotional bonds are very powerful and she tends to see three types of attachments. There is a fourth that we talk about sometimes though. And so these are secure attachment. These are people that um, are very trusting in the relationships. There's also the people that are more avoidant and there's the people that are more anxious. Again, we're gonna describe these in more detail and finally, our seventh theory is the theory of psychosocial development. We already talked about psychosexual with Freud. Well, this is psychosocial with Eric Erickson. And this is the idea we have this unconscious conflict, but rather than being about pleasure or sexual urges, this is about how we socialize. There's a social dilemma we have to resolve at each stage in our development. And unlike Freud, Erickson believed this was a step-like pathway. You could always go backwards and help resolve the ones you had issues with earlier. And so you had just had to become aware of it. So now we've defined the rules, we've defined the theories. Next up, we're going to roll the dice, we're going to move into prenatal development and see what's going on there.